Hello again everybody, this is Spider Fighter, and in this tutorial we're going to get into some basic Lua scripting. You're going to learn how to spawn an entity from within the game, from within a script. Um, we're going to learn how to shake the camera. We're going to learn how to call sounds from within the game, and also how to destroy objects. So, let's get started. First off, we're going to make a bit of a room here. I want to be able to actually see what it is that we're spawning. So uh, I think I'm going to we're going to we're going to spawn things using wall buttons and uh, and plates that will allow us to actually see what's going on in this space right here. So that's why I'm building my room a little funky looking. So let's throw a couple of torches in here. And we'll just make sure that we can see that fine looks pretty good nice big empty room but it won't be for long so first what you want to do is type script that'll show you the script entity and we're just gonna put that anywhere it's fine now if you were just to not call a function usually usually the script is called if I spell it right usually the script is is called um, via a function name you give it any any name you want to and then the and then you can actually call that via a plate another script or a, some kind of trigger if you don't have that then the game will automatically run it at the start of the game so if you don't want all your scripts to run immediately when the player starts playing then you need to actually call it via a function name so with this we're going to call it um alter drop because that's what we're going to do and those little parentheses are important so what we're going to do is when this script is called we're going to spawn and we want to make sure that we have the right name of the entity we're going to spawn an alter so formatting is a little important when you're going to script okay so we've spawned the altar and we need to tell the game where we're at where we actually need to spawn it the first number that we're going to refer to is the level so the first number since we're on level four right now the first number is going to be a four then you're going to need the coordinates um, that are down here in the lower right hand corner so we want to spawn the altar let's say right here where the mouse is that's 1513 so we're going to come back over to our script we're going to type 1513 and that tells the game where we're going to spawn it and then we're going to end the function and we're going to call that we'll just do a wall button right here so we can watch everything and we'll connect that we don't want to we don't want it to activate more than one time or we'd be dropping altar after altar after altar so we'll just activate it once and we'll reset this and you'll notice that when I did it it um when I connected the wall when I connected the wall button to the script it actually automatically filled in the name that, of the function that we gave it see alter drop right here and that's what it gave it over there so the game knows that this particular function will now be referred to as alter drop so let's check it out we come in here and oh we have a problem it says spawning an entity without facing so all that means is that we forgot to tell the game what direction see where it says facing right up here what direction we want that alter to be facing so the way the game reads it is this north is 0, east is 1, south is 2, and west is 3. Now I've seen people use 4 for north and it does seem to recognize it without crashing the game, but in this case it's probably better to stick with what the developers actually um, defined already. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to make a face north, and we're going to give it a facing of 0. And let's try again. And boom there's our altar suddenly showed up now just having it appear like that is a little unrealistic and boring so we're gonna throw in a sound effect as well so back in our script 
we're going to we're going to have it play a sound. So that's literally what you type, play sound. Now on the website and actually down below this video, you'll see a link to it. There is a link uh, there is a list of predefined sounds, sounds that the game already knows um, within itself. So I've already uh, I've already picked one out that I think works pretty well with the sound of stone dropping, and that's the wall sliding lock. Um, now, if you look at the list of sounds, the predefined sound list, you're going to see that it's actually called wall sliding lock underscore zero one. I'm telling you right now, it will not call. It'll crash your script. Um, nine times out of ten, if if the predefined list of sounds has a number in that sound, th it's not going to work. So you need to just just take it back down to the or to the name of the actual you know wall sliding lock or scream instead of scream o one or or whatever it may happen to be. So that's it. Play sound. So what's going to happen is when the altar spawns, it'll play this sound and we'll hear something similar to stone hitting the ground. So let's let's see what that's like. Okay, pretty good, except for it, it's way too loud for an altar that's appearing several spaces away from the player. So how we fix that is instead of just play sound, which appears pretty much directly on top of the player, we can call the sound to play anywhere else we want it to actually play. Even if the player's not there, it'll sound like it's coming from a distance. So instead of just play sound, we put play sound at. Now what we need is the same square where our altar was, that's 15, 15, 13, and we're going to call our sound the same way um, by calling the level first, then the two coordinates that appear in the lower right, which are 14, or 4, 15, and 13. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that because I'm lazy. So we'll do that. Now, I don't need a facing number because it's just a sound effect. So let's hear what that sounds like. So not too bad. The problem is that you can only go about well, four spaces away before it starts to get so faint that the player probably won't even notice. You can actually hear up to eight spaces away, but uh, by th by that time, you whatever you're clicking or stepping on is much louder than what's than than the sound that's being played so far away. So I think just to make it a little more noticeable to the player, we're going to bring it from 1513 up to 1414, and that'll still give us directionality of the sound, but be close enough and loud enough that the player will notice it more easily. There. That was a little bit better. Now you'd think stone hitting the ground is going to be a little uh, little more dramatic. So let's add a little camera shake to it. And we do that by calling party, which refers to the four characters that your player is playing. And it's literally shake camera. <laughs> 